Hello. I'm glad that you're here. Well, like the little treasure hoarding goblin that I am, I picked myself up another 35mm camera. And after a lot of deliberation, I settled on the Nikon FM because some of my favorite pictures were taken with Nikkor lenses, and I wanted a reliable, fully mechanical camera in good condition. As much as I love the Pentax, it has certainly seen some better days, and after it betrayed me in Sequoia, I got a little bit nervous to take it on other important trips I have planned. So, with the new year coming up and all, I thought it'd be nice to start things fresh with a new camera and a few big announcements for the channel. Like our first sponsor! <clears throat> okay, they're not technically sponsoring me, but the Dehancer team did send me a sample of their plugin for review, so if you want to hear my honest thoughts on it and figure out how to save 10% on it yourself, I'll get into that later in the video. Anyway, I wanted to test this camera in some harsher conditions in a place I was familiar with, and considering it's the middle of winter, those harsh conditions are are outside and the place I was familiar with was the Smokies. So after I got camp set up, I set off to a Lum Cave Trail to get the composition so good you just have to get it again and again. If you're new to the channel, I've taken this picture before, and this won't be the last time I take it either. But hey, the good news is the camera works, and I'm pretty satisfied with the result. Something about the Fuji Superior I loaded combined with the Nikkor 24mm just rendered the colors in a way that's really satisfying to me. And yeah, you heard that right, 24mm is pretty damn wide, but I've always found myself wondering what life would be like in the POV of the sloth from Ice Age. Might be the last one of the season. <sighs> For just about everything I've shot 50mm as my go-to focal length. Not necessarily because I'm ride or die for it, but it's just always been the most easily available lens. And one of the other reasons I've chosen this camera is for the pretty good selection and availability of F-mount lenses. So when I saw this beauty listed in good condition for $50, it was hard to resist. Needless to say, I was excited to take it for a test ride on one of my favorite trails. As far as 35mm cameras go, this one had a quite pleasant shooting experience. The viewfinder actually gives you a lot of analog data like your aperture and shutter speed, so you don't have to look away from your composition to make adjustments. Also, the light meter is unbelievably simple, so it was really fast to whip out shots like this. Now all I have to do is figure out how to not miss focus, but I still think it's a decent shot. This picture pretty much sealed the deal for me on Nikon's lens coating. I know Fuji is known for god tier greens, but these lenses seem to take them to the next level. I don't know, maybe I'm just excited about the camera and I'm talking out of my ass, but you can't tell me that moss doesn't pop. I also wanted to mention that these lenses handle flare rather nicely. Considering I took a lot of these shots just looking directly at the sun, it manages to hold some details in the shadow, which is super helpful if you too like playing Russian roulette with your retinas. Eventually I got to the Alum Cave part of the Alum Cave Trail, and wasn't feeling particularly inspired by what I was seeing through the wide angle. So I swapped lenses and fired off a couple of unenthusiastic shots, and decided to head back down. None of these were really worth talking about except for maybe the final shot of the roll, which I suppose would be passable in an entry-level photography class, but it'd never make it in the big leagues. You are lower than pond scum. You got a problem with that? No, no problem at all. Good, because that is what you are, pond scum. Anyway, the sun was beginning to sink, so I started making my way to some high ground for a nice sunset view. I wanted to try out a kind of weird film I got from Atlanta film company called Euphoric, which is described as an enhanced contrast film. And uh, yeah, 
That's what I would call enhanced contrast. This was an E6 chemical roll that I had cross-processed in ECM2, so even the negatives came out with an interesting purple cast leading to a bluish tint on all the images. I can't say I dislike it, but maybe it isn't the best choice for forest and landscape photography. But I wouldn't get much of a chance to test it because I ran out of sunlight 20 minutes later. So all there was to do the rest of the night was do my best to keep warm and sleep in 20 degree weather. At a certain point, I just gave up on sleep and started heading towards Newfound Gap for sunrise. Oh man, it's 24 degrees outside. I do, I do not want to get out of this car. I kind of like how these turned out, and I think the low exposure latitude of the film allowed me to showcase the silhouette of the trees to the sky rather nicely. As cold as it was, it was a very enjoyable sunrise. But now it was time for the important stuff, the coffee. So I pulled off the side of the road to start brewing by the stream. I really like the little moments like this. All the big hikes are nice and beautiful and all, but sometimes these small acts like making coffee by a stream stand out to me the most. Now full of a fusion of PET plastics and caffeinated brown juice, I set off to Laurel Falls to grab some water long exposures. I really like the Nikkor's performance at its highest aperture. It certainly seems to keep things sharp, and going all the way down to f22 allowed me to get some decently long exposures in the middle of the day. The only issue I have is I don't think this film's color profile necessarily matches the content. From what I can tell, Euphoric is more intended for urban environments, but that's just on me for not doing my research. I will say it added sort of a haunted, mysterious vibe to all the dead foliage, though. Laurel Falls was cool, but there wasn't much to the whole trail, so I went towards a place that I knew was packed with material. Chimney Tops is definitely one of the most scenic routes, so I thought it would be a fun way to just turn off my brain and see how the general shooting experience with my camera was. And honestly, it was quite nice. Advancing to the next frame on this thing feels like a dream, and this is the first 35mm camera I've used where the world looks better through the viewfinder. After bracketing a bunch of shots of the stream, I had spent my euphoric, so it was time to see how this camera behaved with a little bit of HP5. Historically, I've never been too pleased with the look of HP5, partly because I suck at black and white compositions, but mostly because I preferred the look of digital Acros simulations so much more, but this single roll may have changed my mind. I thought it would be fun to do a slight shootout with my X-T30 running an Acros sim. Disclaimer, this isn't really a scientific shootout in the slightest. I'm using different settings on both cameras and the focal lengths are nowhere near the same, so take these side by sides with a grain of salt. I'm actually quite impressed with how well a camera that's 43 years older than its competition actually holds its own, and there's some compositions I actually end up liking better on the HP5. Well, as I'm heading up to the final location for this trip, I wanted to close out my thoughts on this camera. The TLDR is, I like it. It's a well-performing 35mm that gives you a clean and easy shooting experience. And even though I submitted it to really cold conditions, it gave me absolutely no issues. What's up, little homies? Love having you here.
how this guy's so friendly and he's just been following me wherever I go. And this guy could not give less of a sh I'm going in this one bacon. I'm going in this one bits. I didn't turn out my best compositions ever, but this trip was a great test for the rest of what I'm about to put this camera through. And speaking of the future of this channel, I wanted to announce that I have a print store now. I uploaded all of my favorite shots across all my videos, and ordering through Darkroom is really simple. Just select your material, size, and if you want a white border around the picture or not. And you can order it framed, but I'd recommend just buying the cheaper option and finding a frame at some thrift store. I just wanted to say thank you for all the support this channel's been getting, and I wanted to give you guys a way to have access to the photos that don't suck ass. And finally, you may have noticed the video looks a little bit different this time around, and that's because Dehancer turned me on to the great wide world of color grading. Dehancer is a film emulation plugin that generates effects like bloom, halation, and a ton of pre-built color profiles for popular film stocks. The team reached out and asked me to give a fully honest review, so here goes. Dehancer is a pretty powerful plugin that unfortunately requires a very powerful computer. I use the Adobe version, and it's one of those plugs that gives you that god-awful red bar. So yeah, it'd be nice if it can render in real time, but this plugin does the job of like six steps of color grading, so I'll give it a pass for that. I found if you just dial in your settings and turn the effect off for basic editing, it works well enough. Not to get too technical, but it's also fairly particular about color spaces, so you have to make sure you're feeding it a color space that it can properly interpret, otherwise I've found that the emulations do some more harm than good. It has a lot of really popular camera profiles in there, but it's just something to be mindful of if it doesn't have yours. Overall, I'd say you can use it to generate some pretty nice looking effects, my particular favorites being bloom and halation. It just adds that nice creative finishing touch to your footage to make it look a bit more vintage and dreamy. I also want to point out that with my limited interaction with the team, they seem like really nice people. So if you want to give Dehancer a shot, they gave me a nifty little affiliate code that gets you 10% off. Anywho. Once I was all wrapped up at the Smokies, it was time to head home so I could catch the World Cup final the next day. And for those of you that watched it, man am I glad I wasn't in the woods for that. I'm really excited with what this new year has to offer, and I'm hoping to make some videos that I'm really proud of. There's a lot of new things going on in my life with some big changes to come, so I'm excited to take y'all along. I hope you have a happy new year, and I'll see you next time.